I'm Angelique Roche, and I have the distinct pleasure of being able to moderate this next panel. Are y'all excited? <laughs> I am too. So I'm going to bring to the stage, with no further delay, two people who probably don't need introductions, Kristen Ritter and David Tennant! Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm really enjoying this because y'all have had a whirlwind of a day already. Um, but now we get to ask a couple questions. What do you got? I, I got some questions. Uh, so I, I think a couple people know you from a few things. Uh, but most recently, a, a little show called Jessica Jones, yep, uh, which has been groundbreaking time after time after time. Totally feminist. It's like a reintroduction of amazing characters, including the character you play, uh, David Kilgrave, yep. and um, Kevin to his friends, <laughs> but only to his friends. Yeah, and he doesn't have a lot. I was about of to friends. say, does he have a lot of friends? No. I just feel like this guy is a very close circle yeah, of yeah. people that he has lots of influence over. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the really amazing things about Jessica Jones from Jump, the moment the show started, is that Jessica is a wildly complex character. Um, and you, you have been able to play this character that is loved and lost over and over again. And how has that evolved um, both in like for you playing the role of Jessica Jones in the last two seasons and how might we see it evolve in this upcoming season? Yeah, um, the sort of series long arc for Jessica is her realizing her potential, potential that other people see in her. Um, it's sort of, you know, she's been chosen. She's been gifted with powers. And, and that means she has to rise to the occasion. And I think she struggles with a lot of self-loathing. So those things, that's hard for her. But as the series goes on, and I've just finished shooting the third season, it's been fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's been fun to sort of see Jessica try and fail and learn. And a little bit along the way, she starts to realize that she's a fucking superhero. And... Yeah, and, and I think, um, I think that's, that's what I've come to love, too, is finding that for her. I just had a vision of Jessica sitting in the mirror and saying to herself, I'm a She will never do that, by the way. <laughs> this, is just, this is my own interpretation of Jessica and sort of thoughts that I have when I'm playing her at times. But, yeah, Jessica would never, ever say that or admit to that. <laughs> so, David, you've played a lot of roles. A lot of roles that a lot of folks here are very excited to ask you about a little later in Q&A, I'm sure. Um, but none, I believe, have been as frightening as Kilgrave. Um, the subtlety that you really brought to the role in, in, such, in taking up this beautiful space in, in the story was pretty amazing. You're a big comic book fan as well. How yeah. much fun was it to bring this character from the comics onto folks' TV screens? Well, they're sort of two, they're, they're slightly two different things, aren't they? I mean, the, uh, I did this, I thought I was a big comic book fan, but I had never read the Alias comics. I think because they were on a slightly different imprint, weren't they? They were, um, they were for a slightly older audience, and I guess I, my comic book fandom came from me when I was a kid. Um, so when I discovered them, you know, when, when, when I was involved in the show and I, 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 I went to these, uh, these stories, I was just blown away by them. And, and Kilgrave's in there, but he, he's, you know, he's a small part of, of, the, of the original story that, that, that I guess Melissa Rosenberg particularly kind of latched onto. And I, 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 but really, there was my love of comic books and my excitement of being involved in a Marvel project. But then there was this project, which was very much its own thing and had its own voice and its own world. And uh, it really 
you, you, you end up going back to the scripts because that's all you've really ever got. And the writing was so strong. And the kind of, the, the different levels that Melissa was working on in terms of the story she was trying to tell uh, it's just one of those things. What you were saying the other day, that first script was one of the, the sort of best pilot scripts you've ever read. It was just a sort of gr great bit of writing. And that's really what you end up focusing on. Um, yes, there was part of me that was delighted that I was, I was in a show that I would have Marvel at the start of it. Um, but, but really, it, it, you, you, you kind of put that aside and you just tell the story that you've got. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> So this upcoming season, you stepped behind the camera. I sure did. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah. And I'm very excited to see. How, how, has your, how has your vision and your perspective as a director impacted you across the board, whether it's in front or behind the camera? You know, I've learned so much being on set every day doing Jessica Jones. Um, you're there all day, every day. You just find, you realize like what works and what doesn't. You have a revolving door of directors coming in. You sort of feel like what works for you, what works for your cast members, what the crew responds to. So I was kind of always taking that information and putting it in my pocket. And our second season, we had all female directors, which was so awesome. And I can, yeah, and I connected with each of them in like, really deeply personal ways and they were always like um, giving me tidbits and, and really uh, generous with their, with their knowledge. Um, so it was around then that I asked Melissa if I could direct one the following season. And you know, they were like, yeah, but you're in every scene, it's gonna be a challenge. So I kept showing up with a list of actors who were also number one on the call sheet who directed episodes of their own shows which episodes they directed, and I just kept doing I didn't that. Know you did oh that. yeah, great. oh yeah. I had to do a, a <laughs> lot of convincing. They didn't just give it to me. I had to beg. Yes. So I was campaigning um, and kind of nerding out in that way for over a year before they finally said I could do one. Um, so. Uh, I'm so grateful that they gave me the opportunity. I learned so much. You have to take this awesome course with the Directors Guild, um, which was just. It was like, I was like a kid in a candy store. Um, and I really wanted to nail it. And I really wanted to impress everybody. And so I felt the pressure. And I just, yeah, I went in with everything I've got. For those who are not like scouring your IMDb right now, which episode is it going to be? I, I did episode two. Yeah. And so how we did it was I went early for the show. To, I got to New York a month early so I could do all my prep and we did all the location scouting and all of those things before I actually started filming episode one. So it was like director mode, actor prep mode, and then I was just an actress in the first episode. And then episode two, I was a director. And then I had to go back to just being a regular actor. <laughs> wow, that is pretty amazing. Thank you, yeah, it was fun. Thanks guys, thank you. So we thought we were done with Kilgrave in season one, uh, but Kilgrave peaked his little way into season two. Yeah. Um, whether it's Jessica's voice or it's Kilgrave's voice or Kilgrave is still somewhere hiding. Yeah. Are, are we gonna see more of the spirit of Kilgrave coming back for season three? I mean, every single episode. Yes! It's all, it, it opens on me. I'm, no, I think that story, has been told. I think that's, that was a, you know, I, I, I think the, the reappearance in season two was a, was a sort of full stop on it. Unless I'm lying. You know, Unless you're lying. It's funny to me because from, from my perspective, because I play Jessica, the Kilgrave is so ingrained in her brain and such a part of her history and a part of why she is the way she is. So Kilgrave is kind of always always there in some way and it just like even if it's like buried there, there's always like something there yeah no that makes and and i think for a lot of comic book fans like we you know like yeah that is why we have a jessica jones yeah um so should we be looking out for you in the director's chair more often i mean i definitely caught the bug I, it definitely suits my personality <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Which is dope because I know um, you also have written a book. Yeah. Um, for folks out there who may not know a little bit about the book, like this is I, I know about it, but you know, what's your talk about your? Can you talk about your book a little bit? Yeah. Some people brought it today. I signed it. Thank you. Um, yeah. So my my book is about an environmental lawyer who leaves her small town. Um, and ends up having to go back to um, uncover a long buried mystery. And it's something that I worked on over a couple of years because I'm a, a, apparently a psycho overachiever and I had to also write a novel. Um, but it's something I, I really, it was a passion project of mine, something I love doing. And we'll see if we can, you know, turn that into something. I am very excited about the potential of that. Um, so, and we kind of had this conversation, David. You're, a lot of us first met you as Doctor Who. Uh, some of us first met you in Harry Potter. Sure, yeah. And then other people first met you as Kilgrave. These are distinctly very, very different characters, but you, nothing is bigger than the jump from being the lovable, fast-paced, running around Doctor Who that we know. You're so good at being dastardly. How do you do it? I just want to applaud the word dastardly because I think uh, it's not used enough. <laughs> um, well, you do it. You, oh, I don't know. I, oh, I don't, how do you ever know what you do? But I think you don't, you don't do it by thinking I'm being dastardly, I suppose, which isn't to decry the word, which is a great word. But, but, you know, you just try and find what that, the reality is of that human being. And, and he's in a, he has a very specific set of circumstances um, that are, on one level, quite fantastical, but actually quite identifiable as well. You, can, if you, you know, if, if you are in a world where everyone acquiesces to everything that you do at all times, that will alter your perception of reality, and you will lose grip on any moral compass that you ever had. So I think that that creates who you are and that creates who he was and uh, that's all you set out to do. You just try and, you know, you, you try and inhabit the given circumstances of that character and you try and be, if it's well written, you just try and be true to the, the, the character that's been created and, and you don't really, you have to not think, I, I don't think any character judges themselves as evil. I don't think. You know, Donald Trump doesn't think he's evil. Um, <laughs> Yeah, okay. What color is this date? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that... So nobody does think that. You know, maybe you think... Maybe he's not. He is. Um, um, so, you know, you, don't, you try not to judge any character, I suppose, is what I'm saying. You, try, you just... The character is assembled by all the things that... By, by all the circumstances that they are given. Inquiring minds want to know, how do you do that for Scrooge McDuck? Well, you just think, well, he's a billionaire, he's lived for 900 and something years, and he's a duck. You put all those things together and you just talk like that a lot. <laughs> gold. Knowledge and gold. Um, so, one of the things I love is that Jessica Jones has been a huge role for you, but it's not the first role, and you've had a huge career. Um, in acting, and I, what is next? Like, what do you want to do? If you had a perfect role in a perfect world, what would you do tomorrow? Um, I mean, I have so many answers to that question, and it changes for, sort of on a, on a daily basis. Um, I, I really like a variety. I like to change it up and do something different. You know, I miss being funny a little bit, so, so we'll see. You are very funny. In, uh, in some things, I'm not funny in Jessica Jones, but, you know, every once in a while. I mean, there's some very... No, I was not even, even going to yeah. reach for it. No, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> so, I got to know, how was it working together? Because both of you guys are very funny, and both of your characters are very serious. Um, how many... What do the bloopers look like? What does the outtake look like? Did we do karaoke between scenes? Like, I don't think there's bloopers. I don't... Well, it was the bit where you broke my nose. That oh, was my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I totally broke David's nose. You didn't break it. You didn't break it. just it bled a little. I will never forget that. I didn't know what happened. 
and you come in front of me and I'm on camera. It's like my close up, but I look at you and I see blood sort of drip down your nose. And I was like, oh my God, I'm thinking in my head, do I keep going? Should I just stick with it? I did, I did, I, I stuck it in it. It was very much not your fault. It was in season two, when, so I wasn't really there. I was a figment of uh, Kristen's imagination. I was that, that Kilgrave. And we did this scene in that bit at the end where the, it, it, in the sort of lab where I'm sort of keep popping up in different places around the room and kind of commenting on what she's doing. So we, and there was one quite long take where I had to actually sort of be in one place and then creep round the back of the camera like that. So that I'd sort of pop up there and do that again. And I, uh, during one of those bits that was sort of, you know, I was trying to be sort of very surreptitious. I sort of crept around, so the camera was on me. I said something, you know, mean and sort of, gave my best blue steel and then then the camera would drift off so I would have to sort of tiptoe around the back at which point Kristen had a fire <laughs> extinguisher which she had to smash something up with so I'm sort of tiptoeing around the back of the camera this fire extinguisher goes bang <laughs> takes me to the floor <laughs> and the scene keeps going the it was brilliant scene kept going so I sort of come around <laughs> sort of pull myself up. The scenes continue on this side of the, on the other side of the room. And I'm thinking, I'm on in a minute, over there. So I sort of do that. And sort of haul myself to my feet. And then try and get my best kind of blue steel on again. With the room swimming around me. And the blood trickling. And then I could just feel this blood starting to trickle down. And then Kristen looks at me and I can see in her eyes, she goes, what the fuck has happened to you? And it was appropriate because I believe it was your last shot. It was! <laughs> Nearly my actual last shot. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> yeah. But you survived. Yeah. Thankfully. And you're here to tell the story. Yeah. Which I'm glad you did. Yeah. So as we're looking into the future, um, what do you think has been for you? Because you deal with the fans a lot, and I know you get letters, and I know you get notices. I love your Instagram, even the knitting pictures. Your dog is adorable. Her dog is really adorable. Mikey Mohawk. You should check out her Instagram. Um, no, I'm serious. Go do it now. Uh, what has been the most rewarding thing about playing Jessica Jones? Honestly, you always hope that your work will be like good and something you can be proud of. This job has exceeded, this role has exceeded any expectations I had because, because of you guys. Um, the fans connect with Jessica in this way that is so meaningful. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. So it's more than just like an acting gig for me. It's, you know... Jessica like, contributing to the world a bit, and so that's really cool. And there's a really, and the cast is pretty badass too. Yeah, we have a great cast, we have a great group of people, cast, crew alike, um, it's, a, it's an amazing group of people, I'm so fortunate. What has been the coolest reaction you've had to being on the show? This is for both of you. There's so many, honestly, that it would be a shame to pick out one. Um, I will, though. Um, I've had boys and men cosplay as Jessica. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, I think what's... Don't beat me. What? Don't one up me. <laughs> <laughs> I... What is the best reaction? I think it's, the, it's, it's how deeply it affects people is, is, is quite moving. Because it's a, it's a superhero show. So it shouldn't be able to deal with the issues that it does as eloquently and as seriously as it does. And yet, it absolutely does. And, it, and you can see the, the effect that that has on people. And it, it, it tells people's stories in a way that Maybe if it wasn't a superhero, she wouldn't be able to do that. Maybe the, the very heightened quality of that allows, allows a sort of witnessing uh, from people, which is, which is very moving to be uh, at all connected to. 
And being a superhero show, it's also pretty demanding, right? Physically, you're doing a lot of choreography. How, how does that change from your other roles in that you're doing a lot of fighting, uh, particularly Jessica doing a lot of fighting with her hands? Um, has it been... How much fun is it to do stunts? I mean, I just want to know. Yeah, I mean, doing stunts is so fun. I've never had to do anything like this before. Um, and it just becomes a part of it. You, like you said, have to learn some choreography. You have to train, you have to lift weights so you can hang. Um, of course, I have an amazing stunt double. Her name is DJ, I love her. Um, yeah, that, it's like an, an extra added element. It keeps you on your toes, it keeps you present. It's, it's really fun. I mean, you get to do lots of jumping around things, a lot. I don't think, I didn't do any fights in Jessica Jones, I think, did Not in Jessica Jones. No. You get thrown around a bit by me. Yeah, a little bit. That's true, up a wall at one I point. hit you a few times yeah. in the face. Yeah, on and off screen. <laughs> <laughs> on and off. <laughs> How does that affect your relationship? No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, do you want to do something fun with me? We're going to open up for question yeah, and answer. Yeah, great. Woo! You've heard questions. enough from me, Love right? It. So I'm going to point to that corner right over there oh, so well where lit. you see that lovely A sign where people have already ah. lined up the stairs. So I have a rule. If anyone was at my last panel, oh, you know my That's why rule. you guys are standing on the stairs. I thought, oh. why would they sit down? <laughs> They're just that excited. Okay. They just couldn't sit down. No. Um, so before you ask your question because I love to know where people are from, and because it's unfair because you know their names and they don't know yours. Please make sure that you say your name and where you're from before you ask your question. Is that a deal? You, you do not sound convincing. Is that a deal? All right, awesome, first question. Uh, my name is Debbie and I'm from Chicago. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. My question is, can you tell us a few of your favorite things? By which I mean either those situations when in the midst of a perfectly ordinary day, your mood will suddenly change because you see something or hear something. You know, people might see a rainbow. For me, it's when I'm walking the dog at 4.30 in the morning and I get to the park and I see the sky. And all of a sudden it's like, wow. Why are you walking your dog at 4.30 in the morning? That's so early. It's so early. <laughs> it's a puppy. Um, and the second part of the question, it, favorite things can also be defined as things that bring deep comfort. You know, a perfectly brewed cup of tea, um, when all the children are home, in the house, that rare occurrence with the whole family. I think she's talking about raindrops on roses yeah. so and whiskers again, on kittens. Question is, can you tell us, you can sing it if you want to, a few of your favorite things uh, defined as either deep comfort or that sense of wow? If you both started singing that song, it would be everything. I love my dog. You do love And I love dog. knitting. And I love crochet. And I love reading books. I love a really good cup of black coffee with the crema on top. Yeah. Big it up for black coffee. Um, I mean, you know, obviously there's lots of other things about... Uh, nope, that's it. That's, <laughs> it. that's it. That's all I've got. I, do that. I think it's quite a personal thing to admit to, actually. I like pizza, and I like pasta, and I like burritos. Uh, okay. I enjoy all the things that you like. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Denise. I'm from Arizona, and thank you both so much for being wonderful storytellers. We're so grateful for you. Um, I have a Doctor Who question, and it's um, once you left the show, was there any episode that you saw with another doctor that you were like, I really would have liked to play that episode? Oh, yeah, all of them. Yeah, I love it. Are you kidding? I'm, I'm, I'm jealous for them all. Uh, yeah, I quite, I quite like the sort of quiet, offbeat ones, probably. They're the ones that you think, as an actor, less, less as, a, as a Doctor Who fan necessarily, but as an actor, you think, well, that would have been fun. I remember the one that Matt did early on with James Corden, The Lodger, I think it was called. It was sort of this weird, offbeat, okay. sort of odd couple. Episode. It was like an episode of The Odd Couple. I remember thinking that must have been really fun to do. There you go. 
Go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm from North Carolina. My question is for David, but um, it's also general. How do you like your tea? And if you take it with milk, is it before or after you put the tea in the kettle? Well, funny you should ask that. I put the tea bag in the mug. We've now got a hot water tap. Has anyone got a hot water tap in their house? Have you got one? No. It is the best thing that has ever happened to us. That answers the, uh, Debbie's question from before. That's a thing of great joy. You don't have to boil a kettle ever again. It's true. It's a thing and, it, and it's just in your, and you sort of have to, you have to do a sort of funny thing to make it work so that children can't scold themselves, obviously. You do a and it just hot, what boiling water just comes out of a tap, of straight out. You call it a faucet. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. So I put the tea bag in the mug, and then and then I, and then it goes straight in. I've been advised not to do that because it, because the scalding water can ricochet off the sitting tea bag and scald you. But I don't care, so I do it anyway. Uh, I then get up and then I put a little bit of milk in the top or uh, while, but other people don't, other people put the milk in first, but they are animals. <laughs> and then you take the tea bag out, Hi. obviously, don't drink it with the tea bag in, you're not savages. <laughs> and then you put the tea bag in the food recycling because it's biodegradable, thank you very much. Hi. My name is Colleen Rose, and I was born and raised here in Phoenix. Um, I absolutely love Jessica Jones. It's been life-changing. And when I found out you guys were coming, I had gifts made with artwork um, that I did. And I was hoping to do a photo shoot with you guys, and my dog had to have dental surgery, so I couldn't afford it. And my question is, could I please give you these gifts I made? 100%. Of course you can, yeah. Oh, go slow though. Don't fall on the stairs. That'd be awful. Look at your shirt. It's so cool. I didn't design that. But I oh. Didn't design this. I love it. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Wow. Thank oh you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so nice to meet you. You're all right. You're grand. Sorry, I'm okay. Round of applause for the excellent artwork. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. It's amazing. All right. Hi, I'm Kendra. I'm at Chesco's here in Phoenix. David, how much leeway do you have in deciding how much, how respectful your characters are towards female characters? I ask this because a friend noticed a drastic difference in one particular scene between your interpretation and your understudies interpretation in the Much Ado About Nothing performance with Catherine Tate. Wow. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting question sort of objectively. I, I mean, I don't actually know specifically what the uh, moment is you're referring to, because obviously I didn't see my understudy perform, but it, it's an interesting one, isn't it, when you have to judge when, when characters do things that you as a human being wouldn't do. I mean, Kilgrave is, of course, a, a prime example of that. And, and actually, you have, to, you have to tell the story. And in telling the story, you're not necessarily condoning the behavior that goes on because you can't, you know, characters do things that aren't necessarily uh, morally appropriate. That's how we tell the stories, by allowing that sort of, uh, I, I, mean, I mean, hopefully, any story that we tell has a kind of uh, a morality to it that we can approve of, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the characters you portray and the things that those characters do necessarily would share that, because that's part of the journey to telling the story, I suppose. Uh, I don't know if that really answers your question, but I, I, I mean, you, you, you make the choices you believe your character would make in that moment, and... Uh, your, your judgment on that shouldn't necessarily be moral so much as to do with what, what the story requires at that point. Does that make sense? Thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Casey. I'm from New River, Arizona. 
and both of you are incredible actors, and I really look up to you both. Thank so you. thank you for being amazing. And I have a question for both Kristen and David. Uh, which episode of Jessica Jones was the hardest for you guys to film? Sorry, what, what scene? What, what episode? Which episode? It was the hardest to film. Hmm. Wow. We, have, we have a lot of tough episodes. Um, there's things that sometimes are harder logistically. Um, the first season of our show was shot in the winter. Uh, it was like historically cold winter in New York. And so some, sometimes that would be really challenging because I just wear a leather jacket and jeans. And overnight, it, we got shut down, I think, twice because it was like seven or, or you know, below, below zero. Uh, so that can be really, really challenging. I remember having like tears freeze on the corner of my eye and I would get little sores on my eyes because my tears were freezing on my face. So that, that's, that kind of sucks. Um, maybe in season one when David was there we shot an episode completely in water, that tank. Mm. That was yeah. a challenge and a, and a constant fear of like being electrocuted. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, the from an acting point of view, the most difficult stuff is also the most satisfying stuff, yeah. you know, because that's where you have to stretch yourself and do, uh, you know, the, the more kind of compl com complex it is from a character point of view, it's, it's both difficult and satisfying in equal measure. I suppose you tend to think of the practical difficulties, like the, that fearsome cold that, 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 well, you had to suffer it more than I do, but I remember some awful nights. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and yeah, so there, yes, there are practical difficulties which sort of just, you just have to get over. Uh, so I suppose it would be, yeah, it, probably the cold, that was probably. Yeah, I mean, the emotional difficulties would be, um, would be every episode because yeah. of Jessica's life. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name's Amaya, and Hi. I'm from Lansing, Michigan. Hi. And my question is for Mr. Tennant. Hi. And it's how do you prepare for villainous roles like Kilgrave or Kale from Bad Samaritan? I suppose just like we were saying earlier, with any, with any kind of preparation for any part, I'm, you know, I'm sure you agree. You just sort of, you, you have to take what that character is and you have to, <clears throat> you have to find the point where they're not judging themselves. So you have to not judge them. Uh, you have to, you, you know, you have to get to the point where you have to understand why they make the choices they make. And if, if you join all those dots up, that, that creates who that character is. Um, so you're trying not to go, well, this is, obviously objectively you're thinking this is the bad guy, and therefore you have a certain, you, a certain hole in the story that you're required to fill. But you have to kind of get slightly beyond that and go, why is this person doing what they're doing? How do I make the series of choices that they've made seem seamless and believable? And, and that's really the same for any kind of character. So uh, if it ends up taking you to a dark place, like with, with Kale or with uh, Kilgrave, then so be it. But that's not, that's the sort of the sum of the decisions that you have to make, I suppose, if that makes sense. Next question. Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm from Phoenix. I actually got a picture with David earlier. Um, my question is, what, what is the scariest villain from Doctor Who in your guys' opinion? Oh, wow. um, you mean for me personally? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Davros. I think Davros, when he starts ranting. Uh, Julian Bleach was amazing in that part, so I, I'll go with that. Hi, my name is Bryn. I'm from Arizona. Um, I hope you're both having a good day. Um, my question was for both of you. I was wondering if you have a favorite meme of yourself or of your character. A favorite meme? A favorite meme. Of yourself or your character. What is Today's all about memes, and I don't really know what they are. <laughs> this word has come up so many times today. It's a picture with words that either has a quote and or some kind of saying that interprets what the picture is. I have a, a gif. That works. We'll okay. go with it. That comes with the iPhone. It's the like it's a like a, a serious eye roll, 
that I use sometimes. <laughs> that, I, that is my favorite. <laughs> Everybody needs a good eye roll gif. Yeah. It sounds perfect. Yeah. Do you know what? This is, this is sort of off topic, but it's this somebody with water. Hello. Hi. That's nice. It's like a, it's like a sports game. Um, do you have any of those foam fingers? Um, sorry. No, I've got one. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, we have to, now, because of things that have been going on in our industry, and it's right and proper, there are now things, there are debates that are happening in our industry that haven't happened before. I'm about to start work on a new project, and one of the things I had to do, had to do contractually, was sit down and watch a video. Everyone on the production, this is happening. Have you had to do this yet? What are you talking no. about? You have to, I had to sit down and be seen to watch a video about, to, I, 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 so nobody can say I don't understand what harassment means. Or, I think oh. it happened to everyone. I don't think oh, it was yeah, just yeah. me. Yeah. It's like a sort of, you're starting with a new company, here are the rules. Da, da, da. And then I'm just sort of going, oh yeah, don't do that. You know, it's, it's all good, proper stuff that we all have. And then at one point it said, remember, the eggplant emoji is not just an eggplant. I went, whoa! No explanation, just that. It, yeah, it, isn't it? No. It's not. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> Sorry. What is it? We'll talk about it off stage. Okay. <laughs> but it, this was said like, I mean, and this video was sort of taking you through stuff so that you understood that it's bad to touch somebody on the bum and all that. And I'm like, yeah, of course, sure but it's taking it from quite a basic level. And then it goes, the eggplant emoji is not just an eggplant, and left it! It's, uh, it's an unspoken thing. You don't use the eggplant emoji with coworkers. I, I'm, now I'm terrified. <laughs> I was just saying, did you want some eggplant for dinner? And suddenly I'm up against a tribunal. <laughs> so, uh, next question. Lovely conversation. Hi, I'm Maria Nowlin. I'm 13 years old. Um, I'm from Prescott, Arizona, and I was wondering, you've met a lot of amazing people and actors in, in your life. Have you met anyone that's left you completely starstruck? Oh. Yes. Amazing. All the time. Was it me? Who's David Tennant? <laughs> Every day on set, David Tennant. Um, I saw Meryl Streep once. Oh. I couldn't even like speak. Yeah. yeah, she was so cool. I can imagine. What about you? Um, Billy Connolly. Yeah, because I grew up with Billy Connolly stand up. My dad would play it on cassette. Remember cassette tapes? <laughs> My dad had a car full of Billy Connolly cassettes. So I grew up listening to Billy Connolly routines. And then I found myself on set playing his son. And I couldn't speak to him for a week. I just couldn't. And then, mercifully, he was everything you would want him to be. He was as fun and as funny and as, and as irreverent as you would want, so. That's the danger, that you meet someone like that and, and, and you've loved them all your life and you've idolized them and they turn out to be a bit of an arse. <laughs> but not with Billy, thankfully. Perfection. All right, next question. Hello. Uh, so, I'm Charles. Hi, I'm Charles. from Tempe, Arizona, but I'm 50% Glaswegian, so that's fun. Well done. <laughs> David, you are Scottish Jesus, and anyways... Uh... I don't know what that means, but I love it. Anyways, what I notice is that both of you often use different voices for your shows. For example, David often uses an English accent. That's your Scottish I roots, noticing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if either of you ever had mess-ups when trying to use different voices on your shows. Hmm. Hopefully by the time you get to actually playing the role, you've spent some time with a voice coach or something, and, to, and you, you're not being, you're not making too much of a mess of it, I guess. And there's always another take if you do. Exactly, yeah. So you're protected. <laughs> it, you, you sort of, I dread being offered a South African because that's an accent I just cannot get my head around. Can you do a South African no, accent? No, definitely not. No, that's my that's my Beecher's Brook. That's a very British reference. <clears throat> Look it up. 
We have a very smartly dressed human over there that wants to ask a question. Hi. Hi, my name is Bo, and I'm from Arizona. I think I'm your biggest fan, particularly your character. I've seen every episode of Doctor Who, and I only have one question. Right. What's your opinion of the Daleks? Of the Daleks? My opinion? I love them. <laughs> I know, but what in particular? I think they're a, they're, a, they're a sort of genius bit of design. They shouldn't really work. They, they don't really make sense. They're, 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 they're this kind of all-powerful race that, that are, are apparently the most dangerous in the universe, and you know, they're, they're troubled by a set of stairs. It shouldn't really work. And yet there's something about that design. There's something about the kind of non-humanity of it. Uh, there's something about the voice. There's definitely something about the voice um, that just means that they... they they captured the imagination back in 1963, and even today they're still uh, th this fantastic kind of bit of pop culture. And, uh, and I love being on set with them as well, because unlike some of the other creatures that are finished off in post-production, they're there, they move around, and the voice gets uh, put on big speakers around the studio, so you, you play a scene with a Dalek right in front of you, and they light up and it all happens. I love them. So we have one more question. Oh, good. So, oh he's so cute. My name's Austin. Hi, Hi Austin. Austin. Okay, so, Doctor, what's your favorite episode of Doctor New Who? I, do you know what? I try not to have favorites. So I'm going to put the question back at you. What's your favorite episode? What's your favorite episode? My favorite episode is kind of like, um, I'm not sure, sure, but it's a I don't it's know. Tough. I it's don't a tough, know. tough question, right? I, I can't remember. Great job. Great job. Well done, Thank awesome. you, Oscar. Nice to meet you. So, that's all the time we have. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for coming to see us. So, I want to thank these amazing folks. And we have one more housekeeping thing to do. We get to take a picture with the audience. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. All right. So, everyone, stand up for me. And you have to be just as excited as you just were clapping. And we are going to take a quick picture. Are you ready? 